My pleasure to introduce Vineet Katyal. He is the Chairman and Managing Director of Crores.com, a very interesting company, a very interesting concept. Let's hear all about it from Vineet. Vineet, welcome. Thanks very much, Mateem. Crores, uh, uh, as you know, the name of the company means billions. Crores in Hindi is, is billions. It was formed out of sheer necessity where uh, I had to get my parents to dinner in India because of success that I'd had. And uh, they said they wanted to go to dinner at uh, a restaurant in India called Bukhara. And it, it took an act of God to get them to a dinner without paying them cash, saying, Dad, here's cash, go spend it over there. So I said, why is this so difficult? It took uh, 200 people, seven days to figure out this. At the end of the day, I had to call up the CEO of Sheraton in India to say, look, you know, take care of this uh, dinner, I'll come back and pay you. So next week I had to fly down to India to pay for the dinner. It was a costly dinner, I tell you. Uh, but out of sheer necessity, um, there was a need, I said, there's an unmet market, there's an unmet need out there to get money into India faster, easier, and cheaper for a common man. How difficult is that to do? And that's how Crores was formed. And the reason for the name of Crores as well is we were going to serve billions of rupees for billions of people. So the app name was Crores, starting with a K. Uh, so now uh, we are in the business of offering prepaid Visa cards into the emerging markets. And one of the applications for the product has been money remittances. If you were to send money into India or to the Philippines, you could send money locally into uh, those cards instantly and they could cash it out uh, to the local ATM with no charge in Indian rupees without any surcharges. But you are different. I mean, there are, there are uh, you know, a dime a dozen money sending services out there, but you consider it different. You were showing me earlier the visa card that you know, you're tied with visas. That's right. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about, you know, so people understand, you know, why it is so unique. So, you know, for a consumer, uh, easy application to understand is for a consumer, if you want to send um, uh, money to India, you could have a prepaid visa card over here and to use it as a visa card over here. One of the reasons why we opted to go for a prepaid card then a credit card or a debit card has been, we did a survey. How many Indians do you think use credit card and don't pay their bills every month? We did a survey. It was, you'd be surprised, 99.9% .9 of the people use their card, credit card as a float for 30 days maximum. So they pay their bills off uh, within next 30, within 30 days. So technically, the value system is meant to spend what you have. If that is the case, then prepaid card is the app mechanism for that. So let's take an example for countries separately. US, you need a prepaid card for doing your chores over here for prepaid card. In India, you need a prepaid card because you cannot open up a bank account easily. Even if you open up a bank account, you have to spend like, I think, uh, I think $10 a month to keep that account open. Um, so, and the other uh, biggest issue was, if you have a bank account over here and you want to send money to India, you could do it as a wire transfer or as to call your friend to say, hey, give money to my family in India. There is no easy way to do that. So what we did was, Visa had built this platform and MasterCard has built this platform. So I said, well, why don't you combine Visa and MasterCard you know, uh, capabilities together and uh, figure out a way to get the money from one card to another card in India instantly. The key was instant as well. Because I want instant gratification. So I could, if you load the card up over here, you got $500 in this card, and your mom calls you in India saying, look, you know, can you send me money? You can just sit on the phone or on the internet saying, send $500, you'll know what the exchange rate is there, and the money goes onto the card instantly on the other side of the world when you're talking on the phone. And now that money is available, whether you want to go on a retail store or an ATM store, and it's ubiquitous availability of money on both sides of the world using the existing banking channels. So this came out of a pain point, a pain say. point. but you've also been an entrepreneur before. I have. Uh, not once, but twice. And you had your base for some time in Silicon Valley. I want to ask you, as personally as an entrepreneur, what are the similarities, if you could point one, and what are the distinguishing factors, if you could point one, between Silicon Valley and Michigan? And then I want to ask you, uh, follow-up question is, why did you personally pick up Michigan? You know, um, I can tell you Silicon Valley, India, I'm a charter member of India currently. Silicon Valley 
is a, a breeding ground for entrepreneurs. It, I mean, everybody wants to become an entrepreneur. They have an idea, you know, over there. Everybody you can talk to has, has an idea over there. In India, on the flip side, has the idea, but doesn't the resources. You know, Silicon Valley has the resources and the ideas. Michigan is lacking both. You know, even though people have ideas, they're saying we're too small. We don't want to uh, uh, be uh, in that place. So for me, it is a gold mine. You know, waiting to explode. You can look at it at this as a negative or a positive. We looked at it saying an arbor uh, is, uh, is like you know Silicon Valley, right? You've got talent, you've got educated people, you've got technology, you've got VCs over there, you've got friends who understand how to build new businesses. So what's wrong with Ann Arbor? What's wrong with Michigan? Now, if you look at it in one in one go, there is nothing really wrong with Michigan. It is the perception. It is a perception that makes uh, it go haywire. And that's why I'm involved with Thai. When I was an entrepreneur, somebody in Thai helped me get through that hurdle to say, look, you are from corporate coming down to entrepreneurship. This is how you make, make that jump. I wanted to give it back. I don't want to give it back in Silicon Valley because there are 10 other success, successful entrepreneurs over there who've got good uh, background, solid background, and, and egos. And they want to make next Google. I want to make simple companies work for people locally who can do good amount of revenue with that and call themselves successful in doing that. In India, the challenge is a lot of the people think small and they want to remain small. In, in Michigan, people want to become big, but they don't know how. If I can help with that, no personal gain. If I can help with that, I can tell my grandchildren, hey, you know what, I, I help these guys grow. I know one guy who's a good friend of mine, he's, he's getting, on, getting on to become an entrepreneur now. He called me up saying, hey, you know what, I need your help. I need a patent lawyer. Uh, or I need a trademark lawyer. I said, what do you need a trademark for? He goes, I've got this fantastic idea, but I need to trademark the name. I said, you're going to spend $25,000 on building a trademark, which you don't know is going to succeed or not. Now, for that kind of advice, the guy is saying, you know, thank you. I can use the $25,000 somewhere else now to grow this business. Now. Can I make an impact over here more than Silicon Valley? Absolutely. I want to be where, but nobody has been. You also travel a lot. You have, uh, you know, obviously business interests in India because it's your primary market. Do you think the entrepreneurial uh, scene is changing? Um, do you see changing the behavior, the attitude, and the support system that has been provided to entrepreneurs in India? I, I believe it is. I, I believe it is getting to where it's not a stigma now to not, not to work for a blue chip company. You know, uh, when I started my first company, my dad called me up saying, you're an idiot. He's like, what the hell are you doing? I, I taught you, you know, went to the best school in India. You, go, you know, we put you in the U.S. You got, you know, why the heck are you leaving this Fortune 500 job, quarter million dollars, and you're going to start up a company that you don't know is going to succeed or not? Right? Because they wanted to go tell their friends that my son works for, you know, KPMG. Now things have changed. Now my dad is very proud to say, my son opened his first call center company. You know, he goes and said, oh, he's starting a new company now. It's a Visa kind of company. You know, the things have changed. The social uh, environment has changed. That helps entrepreneurs to go become more entrepreneurs. You know, I have a friend in India who's just graduated out of college. He's got 10 other ideas. Guess who's dad is saying? He says, forget about working for, you know, these companies. Go do your own business. You might make some more money out of it. But Indians are known to become entrepreneurs. People put money into Indians because they are good entrepreneurs. Because they know how to survive. Because they know how to adapt. A lot of the, comp the, the U.S., uh, you know, the entrepreneurs in the U.S. that have gone to the money, that are already rich, don't do well primarily because they already know what money is all about. They already think about it in money. In, in Indian, like you and I, we have the fire to say, look, if you don't succeed, it's hell. So we got to make it succeed. So if you improvise, make something happen. So I think globally Indians, that's why I'm involved with time, globally Indians are apt for entrepreneurship. So I think uh, from my perspective, things are changing. Okay, Thank you. Of course. Appreciate the time. My pleasure. Thank you very much.